everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining. So this uh, talk is all about stylescapes. So to get into the talk, I just want to, sh if you could uh, raise your hand if you know what a stylescape is. Okay, so about like not quite half. Um, as, do we have any designers in the room who have designed a stylescape before? Not one? Okay, this is going to be fun. All right. So before we get, let's jump into what is a stylescape. So, um, so what a stylescape does, it, it, it elicits an emotional response to the brand look and feel. It's typically and can be showed, shown across print work, the digital, it's anything visual. It could be a logo. So what it's doing is really setting the stage for the, the look and feel of what you want the product to look like. So uh, what they do is they communicate the essence and direction of a project to clients and stakeholders. So for a website, for instance, we're not gonna show a, a, a homepage right away. We don't want them to focus on the navigation, the functionality. It's all about the, the look and feel, the mood, about what's being conveyed. So what this does is when we showcase this, these visuals at a more higher glance, we get a shared vision on aligning the client and um, eliminating misunderstandings early in this in the design discovery phase before we get into functionality. So let's go in a little bit further to look at the elements that make up a stylescape. So it's a carefully curated uh, collection of brand assets. So these include color, typography, icons, images, the actual visual elements and the shapes that make up um, when you integrate shapes and color, these are the visual elements. So when these are combined together, it generates the overall uh, mood for the stylescape. So let's uh, dig one step deeper. We're going to actually look at these key assets and um, break it down a little bit further. So color is a key one. So what color does is it conveys emotions and it shapes the brand per per perception. So the idea is to choose harmonious colors that align with the brand values. So if you look at the visual here, um, typically when a designer will receive brand guidelines, the colors are uh, broken down into segments. So the two larger ones, blue in this case, those are the primary colors. Those take up about 60 to 70% of what's going to be showcased within the layouts, the websites, the key visuals. And then you can also have secondary colors. So these are accents, and then it could be broken down further into tertiary colors. So those could be more complex uh, systems. I'm gonna show one um, project that we did uh, today that uses tertiary colors as well. So the more colors you add, it, it adds to the complexity. So you really need to understand and the design system of how to approach that color because they need to be used very consistently and in smart ways, otherwise it can get pretty messy. So looking at typography, so um, I'm, we're gonna be spoke, focusing on web today, but this could apply in many different cases, but ensure font consistency. So be careful about using too many weights because bold, medium, large, extra, extra bold, black, the more weights you include in a brand, it's going to um, make the design more busy. And the more weights you have on a website, it's going to slow down the actual performance, how those fonts look like on large screens, and then when they're showcased on smaller screens. So we have to make adjustments to the character spacing. We have to really look at the legibility. Um, accessibility is a number one too. So be careful about using too many display fonts and how those are showcased on different smaller headings across uh, mobile devices. Um, readability is also important. And then another key one is iconography and just graphics. So these improve the UX, they aid in navigation and enhancing overall aesthetics and they boost the branding. And then imagery is also very important. There's so many different ways to approach images. I'm gonna show you a few different ways that we've done that with projects. But what this does is it complements the, the text that we're showcasing. It creates, in, in, inspires creativity and enhances communication. So if there's seven key benefits to a stylescape. 
So the one, the first one I uh, mentioned is it aligns the clients, designers, and stakeholders early on in the design process to avoid confusion. It also is a sense of clarity. So we have a clear visual reference. So as the art director designs the stylescape and we move into the UI design phase, we have a point of reference. What does that stylescape look like? How is color being used? What is the fonts? Um, it's, it's a point of reference. So we can directly go back. And then efficiency, it saves time early, getting that early feedback from clients so we can align on what's working and what needs to be improved. So when we get to the homepage design, as Ian said in our presentation, we were very aligned with um, the workshops and leading up to the stylescape, and stylescape that um, we were carefully aligned. And ultimately it, it inspires. So before jumping into that homepage, we want to inspire the client. We've worked on these um, discovery deliverables and have a lot of information and data. So this stylescape is a bridge into the homepage. And then the three other benefits are consistency. So it's much easier to look at a stylescape and find the inconsistencies as opposed to looking at an entire homepage or UI system and there's too many details so this really simplifies it and then communication so it facilitates productive um, communication directly with the client and ultimately it reduces costs which is a big thing so it less is less iterations within those home pages and the ui design because we've all already established the design system so where does this fit into the design system so um, as Morgan mentioned, we do have quite a few um, different tracks. So specifically for the visual design track, uh, we start with a questionnaire. This is UX related too, they run parallel. But this is where we really dig into uh, what type of website are we designing for? What are the key adjectives? Who are the audiences that the personas? And then we move into the component audit. So like as an art director, I need to know what um, components I'm designing for which are the most important and going to be showcased across the website. And then we look at the brand research where we really dig into the visuals and how that logo is being used, the color palette, the fonts, what work has been done on the brand. And then we have the workshops and more interviews where we uh, get client feedback. And then what I'll show you as well is we start with inspiration. We're starting to build those design principles, which generates the stylescape and a look at um, the components, and then we can move into the UI and style guide phase. So I'm gonna show uh, two client examples. Is everyone familiar with OCAD? Perfect, so uh, OCAD, you partnered with Evolving Web. So we replaced their undergraduate and graduate admission websites. Um, that they were supposed to be intuitive, assistive, and inspiring uh, prospective students. So when we went through the discovery exercises and we're getting into the stylescape phase, one of the th first things that um, I need to do is really look at the, the, the brand guidelines. I have to look at what's been done, what, what are the pain points, uh, what's working. So this is where we align with the client. So Bruce Mao provided the design for OCAD. It's beautiful. They're using a simple sans serif um, font, Gotham. They're using all caps. The logo is broken down into three main shapes. Squares are significant among OCAD. It's plastered all over their buildings. So it's a very essential part of the brand. So that large, medium, and small square. Looking at the color palette, they have two primary colors, black and white. That's 60% of, of the brand. Some of the internal items use color a lot more strongly, but in terms of web, what we came up with was we have to really be mindful of accessibility. That was very important for OCAD. So I'll show you how we showcase some of those um, secondary colors, um, but black and white were used very strongly. So in terms of inspiration, so before we um, get into the stylescape, we're starting to de define the design principles. We're taking the, the uh, data we've collected in the early phases, 
And we're seeing what's been done. So what OCAD was looking for was an intuitive, creative, bold, organized, accessible, and inspiring website. So we looked at some of the competition as well as the references um, they provided us. And what we found is um, they're leaning towards a very um, black and white approach using those primary and secondary colors, bold use of color, um, as well as impactful images. Um, when you go to an OCAD grad show, it feels like you're in a gallery. So the work is splattered all over the walls. The students are displaying their work in many different ways. So we're getting inspiration like from these collage effects and also using squares and then this idea of layering. So I'm going to go into the design principles. So here's a few of the, this is what this stylescape is built on. So the tiled squares comes from the building. So uh, this idea of a more collage layout style, simple color palette, primary is focused on black and white. We saw an opportunity to guide users throughout the website uh, using a more colorful CTA. So this is where we pick up the secondary colors. So green is the default state. And then as you hover, it picks up um, the pink hue. So this is, we really wanted the work to shine as well. The student work is very colorful. So we wanted to have the backdrop where these items live on either black or white background. So the content becomes um, the main focal point and it stands out. We also um, got inspiration from the logo. So again, Gotham, all caps. So we're using this oversized um, typography. The logo also uses outline shapes. So that's the reasoning um, uh, for using art within the outlines. And then the collage treatment, it's relating to that very raw feel. When you go into a, a, a painting studio, it's, there's a lot happening. It's very dynamic. There's a lot of uh, collaboration. So this is the idea of the behind the collage. And then this idea of layering. So the design concept is called Windows into OCAD. So um, the, as into, I mean, I'll just read what it says here. So Windows into OCAD, the university provides students with a framework and windows of possibilities to escape the boring and reimagine a more fantastical reality. So it's the idea students are going um, into an educational institution, they're meeting students, they're meeting faculty, they're gaining this knowledge, eventually they're going to get a job and OCAD is giving them um, these multiple windows of opportunities. And then there was also an opportunity to use, um, these, to brand the programs using squares and um, adapting the main visual language of design. So using shape to create um, perspective and depth and texture. So I'll show the stylescape. So this, I'm going to zoom in, but this is a look, a preview of what the stylescape looks like at a glance. So let's go into the actual details. Okay, so when, it, when you immediately land on the website, we're getting inspiration from the logo. So large, medium, and small using the shapes. They're focusing on art, design, and media. So we're showcasing uh, three main squares. As, you, uh, as the user begins scrolling, there's a parallax effect showcasing the primary brand colors, but it's also showcasing a different piece of work. As we continue scrolling, we get a preview of the typography being used for the main headlines, as well as the color palette, the four main colors that we're showcasing. A look at uh, how the cards are, um, the main CTA cards are being showcased, as well as an opportunity to showcase how the hover states work. So this idea of optimism as the lift happens. Oops, sorry. Yeah, some of it's cutting off, but you can see how some of the, type, the oversized typography is uh, being spread throughout the layout as well. We're showcasing these key moments of uh, collages to showcase um, what it's like to be at OCAD. And 
and then these opportunities to showcase the key facts and figures very boldly. Again, uh, reminiscent of the logo outlines. And this is kind of a look at the branded projects that we were proposing. So it's the idea of is we're using the visual language of design, just using squares, and each program would showcase um, these squares in a unique way. This is how the, the hover states work. And then we're creating a shift between white to black using the primary colors. Again, showcasing the students front and centers, uh, multiple genders, ethnicities, students in action, showcasing their work proudly. At the, at the, we also wanted to showcase these moments of large CTAs. So when the students um, get to the end of the page, they're being directed to the next step. So if they've got to um, the end of the home page, the key action is to learn how to apply. And then when they're on that page, it, the, the story continues. And then, whoops. It was also important to get users to subscribe, so we included an interactive ticker at the bottom to showcase more of the um, secondary colors. So um, you can see, once we went into the UI, you can see how that stylescape and the actual visual design, it's directly related now. So we had approval on the stylescape. We, if we have an idea for the visual direction, now we can provide the user UI designer and the art direction to move forward with it. So it's the idea there's consistency between the stylescape and the UI. So the next project was uh, McMaster University. So what we're doing with them currently is we're designing their faculty website and specifically to engineering. So again, focusing on the existing assets. So in this case, um, we had to follow their basic brand guidelines, but we wanted they wanted us to elevate what they currently have. So they have quite a few colors across their brand. Um, you can see how the, the, the main CTAs are working and maroon is the primary color as well as the yellow. And then the brighter hues are more secondary colors. They're integrating circles throughout very strongly, uh, clean sans serif typography, um, but it's just outdated. So they wanted us to elevate, elevate the experience. So essentially what um, McMaster was looking for, they wanted a modern and innovative take on the brand and website approach that feels more digitally native and keeping all of the brand components, but bringing a fresh perspective. So a few of the key principles was the idea of the grid. Um, so as an engineering, uh, they're building. Everything has structure, a, a bridge needs to stand strongly. So we suggested to use the strong grid as a platform and showcase that um, proudly throughout the components. They're also using a uh, Garamond. So we're showcasing that um, contrasting it with Roboto as a, as a more hum, human touch. In terms of color hi hierarchy, um, the main CTAs um, is going to be showcased in yellow. And then the secondary ones is the maroon. So if you land on a page and there's one button that they want, we want the users to be directed to, in this case, apply or register, this is the button that is going to be showcased on that page. It can be quite overwhelming when there's quite a few components and buttons. So we want to direct the user um, to the most important step. A few different approaches for iconography, very clean uh, outlines, picking up the circles, which relates to their current branding, and then looking at image treatments. So we have these key moments where we're integrating the secondary brighter hues uh, using uh, duo tones as well as overlaying the grid graphics. And again, uh, this is very student focused. They were looking at um, promoting engineers and specifically more females. So we're showcasing those throughout uh, very strongly and proudly uh, throughout the, the website. And then we want to contrast this. There is quite a bit of photography, so really getting into the raw um, 
aspect of what engineers do is building. So we have these isometric graphical um, um, displays of machines that elevate and lift off the page. And then we're using these strong, uh, bold, and large um, metrics as well. So we, in this case, I'm going to show you two stylescapes. So we gave them two directions. So I'm going to zoom into this one. The first one is, again, focus on the students and the work they're building. We got inspiration from the actual uh, the grid matrix of uh, some of these um, robotics that they're building. So you're going to see circles more throughout this specific um, a specific concept. A look at the typography that we're using Roboto, but we're taking a more lighter approach to how the font is showcased. So the work and the students become the main focal point. Again, having these moments of large typography showcasing the two different fonts to create and generate interest. A look at how the color palette is showcased. So showcasing the, the dark hues as well as the grays and the yellow is the main call to action to direct users. And then let's look at some of the tertiary um, colors. So we use those within these more circular uh, components to showcase, to lift some of the work. This is a look at that isometric item. So it's lifting off the canvas. I think these more organic moments So creating a lot of contrast as we scroll through the page. Again, hover states and picking up, or the active state picking up the maroon. It's more duotone moment, so large um, headlines, as well as more oversized call to actions with the arrows. And then it contrasts with these more smaller branded moments different ways to have images um, expand off out of the circle. So in this case, it could be team photos. We could showcase the duotone in this instant. Primary and secondary buttons for the maroon and the light. So basically we're showcasing circles through this one and we're giving the client inspiration of how this could be adapted in many different ways looking at the matrix. So again, following that grid aspect, having some rounded corners, pulling in those circles to lead into the next component, focusing on research clusters. Here's that uh, key uh, call to action moment. So enroll now, this is a very branded moment. So this is concept one. So I'm gonna show you concept two. So this is a very um, a different approach to the typography, more um, bolded headlines. You're going to see um, the, the grid lines shown throughout. I think they're visible. Yeah. Yeah. So this one's solely based on the grid. Everything is connected. So the idea of building a bridge and every component, whatever way it's stacked, it always pieces together. So it's taking that bridge aspect, but bringing it into a digital framework different approach for using colors within the cards, the maroon, as well as the yellow, showcasing uh, strong uh, call to actions, all caps in this case within the buttons, showcasing the, the work and the students and the actual things they're building and working with, bolder approach to typography, white and gray are more strongly used. So if there's one frame within this stylescape, um, this is the one that summarizes the project quite well. So it's very grid focused, everything connects essentially. So this, is a, this was a longer stylescape. We don't usually design them this long, but for this specific mandate, they have thousands of pages, tons of components, and um, we had to really get them on board. There was a lot of stakeholders. So we really wanted to wow them on this. So what they ended up doing was um, they, they chose this concept as the given one, but they really liked aspects from concept one. So we actually melded them together. 
moments. So these moments of big images showcasing the students, big typography contrasted, with more interactive states with images changing. There's the large um, number of callouts, these branded moments where we pull in the maroon, brighter approach to iconography. They responded uh, well to this. More interactive states for showcasing news, so very simple, but uh, large images to complement the more um, in-depth information. And then a few of these branded moments where we showcase the key brand. So I'll show you what um, the UI looks like. So it's currently being built right now, but you can see how the grid's been applied. We've taken a few different components from each of the stylescapes and applied that to uh, the UI design. So we're currently in the process of building this project. Um, quite excited where it's going. We also uh, gave them a photo and video strategy, um, which was really great when universities do this. They're hiring photographers to create custom work. and. Um, I created a 60 page document. I actually used ChatGPT for this one as references. I put in the, the prompts I was looking for, and I, I think I did this in a week. Like it was, I'm finding AI is very powerful, so we took advantage of that. So, what should be showcased in the banners? What tips and tricks we should give photographers? How they should um, showcase video? Where are the focal points within the banner? Where do the heads need to be shown, especially when it goes down to mobile, because we don't want our heads to cut off. So the details go on and on. Um, but just in summary, so stylescapes enhance clarity and brand identity, they, and they uh, essentially foster effective design projects. Thank you.